Thanks for tuning in to Retire Hour, the weekly show about complete retirement planning, including income planning and investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Join us as we take a comprehensive look at retirement with financial advisors Danny Goolsby, Larry Clefcorn, Matt Goolsby, Jonathan McCoy, along with other members from the Market Advisory Group family of companies. Welcome to Retire Hour. Welcome to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby, your host this week. Thanks for tuning in. This is the weekly show that brings you all the information you need to know and be aware about for your retirement and keeping you up to date with the ever-changing landscape that we're going to be facing this year. But one of, before we get started, I want to tell everyone out there to go out and check out our website, retirehour.com. You can go check out our past episodes there. We actually record them, video and audio, so you can go check out the archive and get caught up on anything you've missed. You can subscribe to our podcast while you're there as well on any of the podcast services you use. And don't forget to go out and like our Facebook page. We do clips from the show and we do some promotions sometimes there. So welcome again to Retire Hour in the studio for this first half of the show. I've got Danny Goolsby, an advisor with Market Advisory Group. And then also on our remote cam and uh, joining us today as well is Larry Clefcorn, another advisor here with Market Advisory Group. And guys, with all this money that's been printed uh, to help sustain the economy and and bail out uh, companies that have had problems with the coronavirus uh, impacting their their economy and their their companies, what what might be the likely effect that we might be seeing here? Because I'm hearing grumblings of inflation. And what does that do to the market, Larry? Well, one of the things that... It'll have some suppression to the market. Uh, anytime prices are going up, then that means that consumers can buy less. Um, and it, it's not unusual um, for all asset classes to be affected. Uh, however, um, we've learned over, over the time that typically equities will fare better than the others. And um, especially if, you know, the rates and, and, and the yield curve continue to rise, that means the prices of bonds are going down. And that's not a time when you want to be buying those. So when you're looking at buying bonds, uh, is this maybe as we see inflation get come up on us, is that something that maybe uh, if people have a lot of bonds in their portfolio, they might need to take a look at to maybe some alternatives at that time? Yes, absolutely. I, I would want to really examine what the balance is in the uh, in that portfolio and make adjustments where you're leaning more on um, on the equity side, which would be stocks and, and companies uh, or a group of companies, um, especially like ETFs that kind of spread things out. So, Danny, on you and I talked about on last week's show about where the national debt is and how how fast it's going up. Um, what what would you have to add to that as far as uh, the potential that if inflation does end up happening because they are creating more money supply? And we talked about modern uh, monetary theory uh, last week. But what what are some of those things that you you you'd like to point out? Well, so uh, you can have inflation uh, in times of really where they're printing a lot of money as they are, have been doing in the last 12 to 18 months uh, and, and injecting that into our monetary uh, monetary supply. But there's other times in the, in the economic cycle where you could have low inflation. So it's, it's important to be making sure that whatever you're investing in uh, is, is uh, going to be uh, ha- bridled to the right uh, thing. That's going to infect uh, affect um, uh what's happening in the economy as far as inflation goes again in times of, of higher inflation as larry just said we want to be invested in, in more equities in times of of inflation is really low you want to be more in income producing um, instruments it's always a balancing act it's always a balancing act and if you're going to be hitching your wagon to a particular instrument um and say this is where I'm going to. This is the hill I'm going to die on. You, you may die on that hill. You you need to be. You mean to be fluid. You need to be malleable to what's going on around you. Larry, when inflation does kick in, what is some of the things that that has an impact on with companies that are ex- specifically geared towards income or dividends? Well, the of course the companies during times of inflation, they're um, if they're 
producing goods, their prices are going to go up. Um, and so, you know, that affects the consumer, obviously. Um, and things have a tendency to slow down. And um, that's never a good thing. You know, the Fed has made a statement that they, he, he would like to keep the, the inflation target at around 2%. Uh, other Fed members have uh, chimed in and said that that two and a quarter, two and a half. Well, that's two percent. And they even made the comment that as inflation is going up, that would be when you're leaning more towards two and a half percent uh, for a time before you try to level it out. So it has an effect on companies. It has effect on um has effect on consumers as well. So consumers that uh, might not be able to be spending as much with those companies and and putting um, their dollars to work in those companies, or then the profits are coming down to those companies. It's all it's all correlated. Yes, it is. You know, an interesting thing here. I might just interject. This doesn't sound like economics, but we do a lot of income planning here. All three of us, we do a lot of income planning here, uh, helping people prepare for retirement knowing so that they know if they're going to have enough income. The one single thing that affects them the most is what we project as inflation. That has a, that changes the whole dynamic of how, how long money will last. That's, that's a great point there. And so we're going to go to a break here and when we come back, we'll talk about now some risks that volatility can pose to your portfolio and your retirement plan. So stay tuned after this. We'll be right back. Why would anyone settle for less than full service? Incomplete advice could cost you thousands. Find out what dangers could be lurking in your retirement. At Market Advisor Group, in-house professionals help with today's challenges you could be facing. Tax solutions, Medicare help, estate planning, and investment advice. Our advisors work together with CPAs and attorneys to optimize your retirement. Find out what may be missing in your current plan. Call Market Advisor Group at 316-252-8707. 316-252-8707. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date on current episodes. We videotape them so you can watch them or listen to them. Sign up for our podcast while you're there and get all the information that you can use for helping you in your retirement. Check out our Facebook page as well for clips from the show. Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby, and in studio with me again today, we've got Danny Goolsby, a financial advisor with Market Advisor Group, and Larry Clefcorn, again, a financial advisor with Market Advisor Group. So, Danny, uh, we talked about in the, in the first segment about how inflation has its own risks when it comes to um, equities and potentially people's retirement plans. Now that we supposedly are coming out or should be coming out on the other side of this pandemic, um, should people maybe not be concerned with the volatility or, or should they still, I mean, some of these, some of these swings in the markets, whether it's um, uh, someone getting banned from Twitter and, and, and locking down social media, whether it's uh, riots or demonstrations that are, they're getting out of hand. Sometimes the market's going to react one way or another. And that, that adds a component of, of what they call volatility to people's uh, investments. Yes, volatility is a big thing. Uh, most of us as consumers, we get busy with our daily lives and we uh, we get so busy, sometimes we lose focus of what's happening until there is a big event. For example, in 2020, we had the pandemic and um, you know, in February, late February, early March of, of 2020, uh, there's something in investing called the VIX. The VIX is talks about uh, what's called implied volatility. And most of the time in, in, in years gone by, only traders would be interested in, in what would be called the VIX because VIX talks about volatility and how big the swings are of these, of these, uh, of the uh, stock market indexes. And, and then traders will use that, that to make money. 
that we, again, as consumers, um, we have started to pay attention as investors. We started to pay attention to the VIX because, again, uh, volatility can cause a lot of sleepless nights for us as investors. Traders, traders love volatility. Investors don't like volatility. Yeah, traders like volatility because it sometimes allows them to uh, take advantage of dips or swings and either day trades or short term trades and, 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 and capitalize on that. But uh, the VIX, um, it also impacts sometimes the pricing of options, which typically the everyday consumer doesn't do. Some, sometimes people execute those. But uh, the VIX um, has seen some pretty wild swings this year uh, as, as far as I say this year over the past 12 months because of all the uncertainty and, and the market doesn't like uncertainty. Yeah, normally, well, right now the, the VIX is trading right now as we as we record this uh, at twenty three or twenty three and some change, um, but the VIX hit an all time high um, that closed at an all time high during this pandemic of of eighty two, and eighty two again when the economy was shutting down when people were staying being forced to work work from remote for, from home, uh, people were losing their jobs, people were not going to school, the kids weren't going to school. There was just so much uncertainty, and that uncertainty is reflected in the what's known as the VIX. Larry, when you're looking at things and walking people through their plans, what uh, what things do you maybe pay attention to with the VIX? I mean, it's typically not something we talk about every day with the consumers, but it's something uh, as advisors that uh, are somewhat of a barometer or an instrument that we are, we're paying attention to. Yeah, I... Anytime we start to have volatility, one of the first things I look at is where is the VIX at? What's going on with the VIX? The VIX is a forward looking 30 day. That amazes me and I'm going to come back to it. 30 day forward looking fear index by the um, um, by not only consumers, but primarily advisors uh, that affect the VIX. And, um, you know, it moves so quickly. It's like, how in the world are they basing that on a 30 day? Because it sure looks like it moves on what is currently happening, happening that day. And if it calms down the next day, the, the VIX immediately comes down, like Danny was saying. Right now, being at a 23, when things are really calm, it'll generally run in the mid, well, let's say 15. You know, that's kind of a... a a calm point for the VIX. And that's, a, by the way, VIX, if we haven't said it already, volatility index. So when we're helping people with their retirement plans and they're needing to take monthly income out of their, their investments, if you're having a high time of volatility, whether that's political unrest, whether that's economic unrest, whether that's um, taxation unrest, or whether that's um, coronavirus or, or pandemic unrest, when someone has these wild swings in their portfolio, um, whether it's with us or, or any the average investor, that can um, that can really have an impact on the rate of return that that person sees over that year. Is that right? That, that's true. Yes. Rate of return. And and even more important, we've talked about uh, before is what is happening to the account balance of your portfolio. So. Exactly. Um, that that's that's something that it, we find is even more important than the rate of return. But yes, you're right. The rate of return is affected by the volatility index. So, Danny, you you had something to add on that as far as the, the pay attention to the balance. Well, pay attention to the balance. The VIX. Uh, at the end of the day, the consumers know the, the the balance. That's why we need to pay attention to the balance and. When you have these big swings in the volatility going up and down in the market because of whatever's happening in the economy, the culture, the uh, world events, um, you still need income. And when you're taking income and you have these wild swings down, your investments very likely went down. And when you exacerbates the problem on how much your account balance is when you're taking money out of your portfolio in these big market events down. So there needs to be a way to address that. And we do that. So I, I will, we're about to go to a break here, but <clears throat> when you're, when you're helping people address that, what are some of the things maybe that you're, you're doing to help them uh, potentially 
avoid those those swings in their portfolio or maybe do they have different pots of money where they're taking income from yeah and and, and the answer is is we do d all of the things you just briefly mentioned there we we have different pots of money that act different ways so when we sit down and do uh, investment advice and income planning as larry uh, referenced just a moment ago uh, with our clients we want to have non-correlated approaches to money management. Non-correlated is a fancy word for saying diversify. We learned in grade school, don't keep all our eggs in one basket. So we want to have all different things that provide income streams that are not going to be affected by the same VIX, the same market volatility swings. So with that, we'll go to a break here. And when we return, we'll talk about how the inflation risk and the volatility risk coming together might play for a perfect storm event or why does the market continue to keep going up here? And stay tuned here after the break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Matt Goolsby, partner at Market Advisory Group here in Wichita. If you have a 401k at a former employer, we're offering a free visit to discuss your options. Call 316-252-8707 to discover your strategies to help you get your money back on track to serving you. Remember, it's not about your money, it's about your life. Call us today at Market Advisory Group for your free 401k strategy session, 316-252-8707. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Don't forget to visit our website, retirehour.com. You can also download our podcasts anywhere you find podcasts. Just search for Retire Hour. You can also view the information that you've seen in these episodes on our Facebook page, Retire Hour. And also you can look us up on YouTube by searching Retire Hour. Uh, plenty of information, past episodes. You can uh, view the streamed video version of our show as well. Get an idea of what it looks like here in studio. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. And we've been talking here in the first parts of the show about how the inflation risk is becoming a growing concern here with some of the people we've been talking to. Also, some of the risk here is some volatility, uh, how we've had quite tremendous swings in the markets over the past 18 months here. We're in a very different spot than we were this time <clears throat> last year where the markets were just continuing to go up and then we went into the shutdown mode. But I think that, uh, I mean, another thing I'm hearing a lot is there's a lot of pent up demand. So once things are back open, once people can travel, once people can uh, go to the movies, do things comfortably and feel uh, that they have some sense of, of safety and, and they don't have to worry about it or be conscious of it. Uh, once we can get back to shaking hands and, and, and embracing one another, but what, what in the meantime, when we are on the other side of this, uh, equities have shot up and we're, we're still approaching uh, record highs. Uh, seems like that happens often. The political climate is, is shifting. I mean, we're going to see this this week. A new president uh, in, um, inaugurated. A new Congress will be set. So uh, when we look at these potential, um, I, I don't know that I want to go as far as saying hazards, but the, the unknown of what a Democratic controlled Congress will do along with a Democratic president, they could roll back the tax cuts. They could uh, implement new taxes. They could implement new regulation on businesses. But the market has seemed to be shrugging this off. I want to go to Larry first on this. Larry, what is some of your um, what's some of your thoughts on what might be happening there with the indexes with uh, what the average consumer might look at as, as and say, well, that's bad news and I don't need to be um, I don't need to be in the market or I want to get more conservative or I want to buy gold or all these different things that are starting to sink in. But then again, you open uh, I say you open up the paper. Uh, no one opens up the paper anymore. We read it online. <laughs> uh, uh, you look at the yeah, news right. and you see these indexes continue to just climb. What are maybe some of your hypotheses on on why that is happening here? Well, you know, uh, as the market does climb, um, people feel a little bit better about it, but they still feel the pain of when the volatility plunged. And I oftentimes will talk about that is that 
the key to keeping your account balance uh, in check is that you don't want you your your investments to plunge like the stock market. You'd rather them only go down some. You don't want them to plunge. And so that's a very important part. And one of the ways of controlling that then is what is the exit plan? Especially when we're talking to someone who is either doing their own, they're, they're doing um, their own investing, and maybe day trading even, um, or they have a, another advisor. We ask them, what is the exit plan? And most of the time we get a blank stare. Yeah, that's, that's an, a good question to ask someone when it comes to that, because um, oftentimes they're only reacting to something after the fact and, and when it comes to the media or, or news events that happen, and then that's when it gets their attention. Danny, is, do you think maybe there's some, and, and, and I, I hesitate to get any political here, but do you think that there's some things here that the markets are maybe responding to that, that they think um, uh, Biden and, and the Congress will be a little bit more of an old guard there and that, that maybe that prevents or presents some stability for them? Uh, certainly, um yeah, the markets historically like divided government. They just do. Um, when you have gridlock, when you have opposing parties that are controlling different houses of Congress, um, then um, uh, the market can understand gridlock. It knows how to move forward with that. On the other hand, if you have uh, Congress controlled by all of one party, it doesn't matter which one. Uh, normally, you'll have, um, I won't say sweeping changes, but you'll have easier things to get done. Yeah, yes, there could still be some bickering in Congress, and, and and that's what they do is they bicker back and forth. They argue with each other. Um, but uh, platform wise, uh, if they're all coming from pretty much the same perspective, it's going to get easier to get things through. The market may not necessarily like that. And again, it, that's that remains to be seen. But, you know, George Patton, you know, that famous w, uh, World War Two uh, general, he said, you, you show me a room of people who think alike and I'll show you a room of people who aren't thinking. Yeah, that's true. That's one of my favorite quotes. Actually, you know that too. But um, so, Larry, you and I talked uh, before the show started. Uh, some of the people we've met with recently want to buy gold because of all this uncertainty and they, they have this fear. Talk to us a little bit about what you've seen uh, historically with gold and how it reacts to different things. One of, one of the things that I point out to people is I, I like to bring up a chart showing gold. And I'll start with just just showing the gold only and go back 15 years and uh, and then start to narrow it in. And around 2011 was when we had the all time high in gold. Well, if you look at that chart and then you see how gold plunged, talked about plunging earlier, gold plunged. Uh, for the next year and a half, and then went sideways at that lower price for three or four, five years before we hit this pandemic and gold shot by, right back up. I always ask people, so if you would have bought gold anytime a year before that 2011 high or a year after, was that a good investment? And they look at that and it opens their eyes. And I said, that's not what they tell you on the TV commercials, is it? And um, and then the other thing that, uh, you know, we've talked about is how what, what is the what is the thing that affects gold prices the most? And the answer to that is and I'll bring it up on a chart and it's currency, uh, the, the strength of the dollar. If the U.S. dollar is is rising, gold is going to come down hard. But if the dollar is weakening then gold will spike up. So gold isn't the safe haven that everyone necessarily thinks it is. However, it's not a bad idea to have a small portion, maybe 10% of your portfolio in certain conditions to, uh, to be in maybe a gold ETF. And the reason I emphasize an ETF rather than, than physical gold is that it, it can be hard to unload physical gold quickly. That's true. So and, and that's a great point. Um, and so oftentimes gold is a, a hedge for safety when things get uh, a little rocky and then and sometimes people cycle back out of it. 
So if you guys are, are talking with people just like I am, and if they need help with uh, maybe taking a look at their plans or having things uh, reviewed for all the ever-changing economic conditions that are going to be happening out there, even the tax uncertainty that might, might be happening as well, they can call us at our office at 316-252-8707, and they can uh, set up a time where they can have their questions and concerns addressed and, and talk about those, those different items. So we want to thank you for tuning into this half a retire hour. Stay tuned after the break. We'll be talking with our Medicare advisor, our attorney, and also our CPA on other important things you need to be paying attention to for your retirement. Stay tuned and we'll be right back with more retire hour. to help people with their finances was really the thing that drew me to this industry. We can take any situation that's thrown in front of us, we can look at what issues they're having, look at what fears they may be trying to work through as they work into retirement, and come up with very creative solutions, not pre-built, pre-packaged solutions, and make sure that we've got something custom tailored to them that's going to help them through their retirement years. Market Advisory Group, proud to be local. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. In studio with me here, I've got our Medicare advisor, Bill Vodder, with Market Medicare Advisors. And Bill, you mentioned last week on the show a second open enrollment period, or, and, and I was just like, what? Because most of the time, everyone generally can, uh, thinks about that open enrollment period is kind of that period in October to first part of December, where if they want to change their prescription drug plan, they can. But uh, tell me, tell us more about this and specifically me, because I had no idea there's another open enrollment period. Well, actually, there's many open enrollment periods and it gets kind of confusing to try to keep some of these straight. But for instance, the the one that you're thinking of, the first one runs from October the 15th to December the 7th. That is the annual open enrollment period. Now, during that time, you can make about any changes that you want to make in Medicare. You can move from traditional Medicare to a Medicare Advantage or from Medicare Advantage back to traditional Medicare. Um, you know, a lot of people think that they have to change if they want to change their supplements. They have to do it at that time. So Medicare supplements, that, that open enrollment period does not affect Medicare supplements, except for people that have tried Medicare Advantage for 12 months and now want back out of it. But um, but yeah, there that's the the and that's, that's the big one. That's the that, one everyone kind of thinks about. Right. That's the big one that everybody thinks about. But there's another open enrollment period. It's re called the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period that runs from January 1st to March 31st. What is that? <laughs> yeah. What is that? Well, that is a when this is what gets me is it's a much longer open enrollment period, but it's a more limited open enrollment period with with that one. You can change Medicare Advantage plans or you can disenroll from Medicare Advantage and go back to traditional Medicare and pick up and then you're and pick up a standalone prescription drug plan. So say you went and changed from traditional Medicare, or maybe you're just coming on Medicare for the first time and you're on Medicare Advantage and you're like, you know, this isn't working for me. And I think this is actually brought up for the guy you talked about last week that all of a sudden now he has this medical condition where his shots are going to cost him almost $700 a, a month in, in expense. So now he's, he's kind of rethinking some things. Yes. And so this is now a period where since he went to on a Medicare Advantage plan, I'm trying to keep this straight. <laughs> As he went on Medicare, he went, he chose to go to a Medicare Advantage. And so during this second or this, during this period of the open enrollment, because now it sounds like there's more than, than one, let's not number them. But during this January one to March 31st, yes, he can, he can potentially now go back to traditional Medicare and pick up a supplement. Yes. Even without an insurability issues or things like well, that? Well, because he's still, <laughs> here we go. That's why I'm telling you, there's multiple enrollment periods. He is actually still in his, what's called his open enrollment period, um, his first six months on Medicare. And in that first six month period, you have the right to pick and choose any company that offers a Medicare supplement, any plan they offer, and they have to take him. And so he's within that six month period. 
And so he, he, because of that, he could disenroll from a Medicare Advantage right now and pay, and he still has that option to pick up a Medicare supplement. Man, that is regardless of his health. Then if this, then that, then that, then this, and then carry the one minus the two. I mean, these are a lot of things that, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing you even reference some notes here because you do this every day and this is even hard to catch up with it or stay on top of. It is. It is hard to stay on top of. And then there's the, the general enrollment period, which the general is for the people that missed it. They didn't get enrolled in Medicare when they were supposed to. Um, and and so for them to pick it up later on in life, that open enrollment period runs from January to March to get enrolled. And then it'll take effect on July 1st. So they have this window if they haven't signed up for Medicare that they have to. They then, didn't sign up when they were supposed to. So there, there's a there's this a. Is, this is the detention for people that, <laughs> they, they, that got were late for signing up for Medicare. Yes. But then it won't take effect until halfway through the year. Right. Till July 1st. And, and then there is uh, what's re- called a, an SCP or special enrollment period. Um, and under that, there is a long list of conditions that could happen to cause a special enrollment period. Um, for instance, people that are retiring at age 68, they've been covered by group insurance. Um and so then they, they retire and they want to go, they pick up Medicare Part B and that creates a special enrollment period at that point. Or perhaps they lived in Dodge City and they moved to Wichita. That move opens up what's called a special enrollment period because the, the Medicare Advantage plan they had in that area is going to be different in this area. Yeah, that was something that I learned a long time ago with you that different depends on where you live. You, your coverage might not be I don't want to use the word portable, but you know what I'm saying? It's not going to transfer with you to that zip code because it's based on your zip code, right? Right. Based on where you're at. So, and so that's a special enrollment period. How does, is there a time limit to that? I mean, yeah, 60 days. If you, uh, if you make that move, for instance, let's say you move from here to Kansas city, you might be able to stay on virtually the same Medicare Advantage plan, but you have to transfer to the one that's available for that area. There's different code numbers involved. And if you don't do it within that 60 day window, you will automatically be kicked out of that Medicare Advantage plan, kicked back to traditional Medicare. Hmm. Now, does price vary per, per zip code? Does, can you, have you seen the kind of prices vary sometimes or uh, well, different markets? With most, I shouldn't say, I'm going to say most Medicare Advantage plans today are referred to as zero premium plans. There are a few that do have a premium. I, I don't want to name which companies those are, but there are some that do have a premium. So it would depend on the one you picked up or the one you're given up uh, as to whether you had a premium or not. So the Medicare Advantage plans, but what about the supplements? Are those going to change typically sometimes from market to market areas uh, location wise? Nope. Supplements travel with you. Okay. If you buy one in Kansas and you move to Florida, you take it with you. So, and and in that case, you'd probably want to hang on to it because the rates for Medicare supplements do vary by zip code. And Kansas has some of the more favorable rates in the nation. But if you move and you have traditional Medicare with a supplement, it has to follow you. I mean, they, the insurance company can't say, well, no, you moved to, you know, Arizona or wherever. You're going to need to get a new one down there. That's only when it comes to Advantage plans. Right. Only to Medicare Advantage. And Advantage plans are are like a PPO plan, right? Yes. All Medicare Advantage plans are built on, well, I shouldn't say all. There are some that, that aren't, but most Medicare Advantage plans are built on preferred provider networks. Hmm. Interesting. So that that's why it's so important that you're using that 60 day special enrollment period to get on the next one because it's, it's a provider thing. Yes. Okay. Makes sense there. And if you're wanting to stay on a Medicare Advantage plan, sure. you could lose it and have to wait till, wait till the a- annual enrollment period in October, November to get back on it. The annual enrollment period. So I mean, how many, how many periods are, are there here for this uh, enrollment period? You've got the, the annual uh, enrollment and in, in, there's an initial enrollment period. That's when you are first go either going on Medicare or first taking Medicare, I would say part B, but that also can fall under what's called an SCP. But the, the initial enrollment period is for most folks is when they reach age 65 and, and go on Medicare. So the time, the time though, of the year that we're in, so this first part of the year, we're in, we're in January right now. That's, that's hard to say, but we're in January right now. 
So they have this January to the end of March for if their situation's changed, they can go back to traditional Medicare. That's for folks that are on a Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. Because it's a Medicare from January to the end of March is specifically a Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. So if something's happened or changed in their situation, they can go back and talk with a Medicare advisor and say, hey, I, I need to take these steps. What, what's all involved in those steps? Uh, not much, really, other than taking a look at what your options are and filling out the appropriate paperwork to enroll to a different Medicare Advantage plan or uh, notify that Medicare Advantage that you want to want to step out of it and go back to traditional Medicare. Well, uh, if they have questions with that, they could maybe have, come into your office and have a conversation about that. This uh, <laughs> special enrollment period, the second enrollment period. And that was news to me when we talked about that last week. So if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan and things have changed, feel free to reach out to Bill at his office at 316-252-8707. We'll stay tuned after the break. Uh, here we'll be back with uh, Joshua Sakura, our CPA from Market Tax Services. Stay tuned. Why would anyone settle for less than full service? Incomplete advice could cost you thousands. Find out what dangers could be lurking in your retirement. At Market Advisor Group, in-house professionals help with today's challenges you could be facing. Tax solutions, Medicare help, estate planning, and investment advice. Our advisors work together with CPAs and attorneys to optimize your retirement. Find out what may be missing in your current plan. Call Market Advisor Group at 316-252-8707. 316-252-8707. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date with current episodes. Also check out our Facebook as well, Retire Hour, for clips from the show. And don't forget to go and see us on uh, YouTube. Search for Retire Hour or download our podcast of the episodes anywhere you can download podcasts, searching Retire Hour. to retire hour thanks for tuning in to today's show i uh, wanted to remind everyone retirehour.com you can check out past episodes or watch them on youtube there as well at our website so joshua sakura our lead cpa with market tax services you know here we are uh, first part of the year uh, we've had now two stimulus bills some things were maybe carried over in kind of some ways let's talk about that for maybe some people that are listening out there and have some questions on that yeah, that's a great question. You know, the uh, Congress passed a further uh, stimulus bill at, right at the end of the year. It was wrapped up in this something called the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which sounds very official and important, right? Kappa. That's right. <laughs> um, and, and it did carry over some things like they thought it was a great idea during the coronavirus uh, disaster that people were able to pull money out of their retirement accounts to help help them through that disaster. So they took that idea and extended it out to any federally declared disaster. And there's a whole legal thing about what makes a disaster where you can pull $100,000 out of your retirement account. There's no 10% early withdrawal penalty. There's no mandated withholdings on it. Um, and then you can spread the tax impact of that uh, withdrawal through your taxes over three years instead of taking that hit all in one year. So let's catch up some people that might not be familiar with how those those uh, penalties work in, in the first place. Sure. So uh, correct me if I say anything wrong here. You're normally very good at that. We'll do. Um, but so if someone has a, a retirement plan at work, 401k, IRA, any of those any of those mm -hmm. plans, typically, unless they're not over the age of 59 and a half, if they take a withdrawal out of that, there can be not only the income taxes due, mm -hmm. but a 10 percent penalty on top of that. That's right. There are some exemptions, I think, under 72T. 72T. There's also some exemptions around this called the rule of 55, where if you separate from your employer and you're 55 or older, there are some special rules that can allow you to make um, penalty-free withdrawals from your retirement account 
But I want to throw a big asterisk there. Talk to your financial advisor, talk to your tax advisor to make sure that you're checking off the box on all those rules. Yeah, there are a lot of variables, especially even with the employer plan, I think, as that, well. Exactly. But so this this is different. This hundred thousand dollars, even though the, the dollar amounts the same mm-hmm. uh, from from the CARES Act, the CARES Act was a completely different um call it provision and then what we're now living under this year that's right the cares act was very narrowly defined around the coronavirus around the impacts of the pandemic and the shutdown whereas in this new bill it's really more focused around federally d- declared disasters which could be tornadoes wildfires flooding hurricane earthquake i think you and i were talking about before the show started uh you know if, if someone um, needs to rebuild their house, mm-hmm. you know, use that example there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if somebody, you know, have, you know, we've been having a bunch of earthquakes here lately, should something crazy happen and your house gets knocked down, you'll need, you know, funds to replant, to rebuild it. And while insurance can help around that, uh, they may not cover the whole bill. There may be impacts around, you know, the timing that you need to get started with something. And so you'll be able to pull money out of your retirement accounts to address that and maybe you need it right away maybe you don't but then you can pull it out you can um, invest it somewhere so it's there readily accessible and then when you're ready to to need the cash you'll have it there setting aside now uh, it's always great when you have an emergency to go get a bunch of money if you you need it because sometimes uh, that helps with the emergency sometimes that helps alleviate some of the stress associated Mm -hmm. with that emergency but what you do today does have a trade off for tomorrow. That's right. Um, so we're talking about pulling $100,000 out of your retirement account like it's no big deal, but that can seriously impact your the, your retirement picture and how that's going to work out. Um, not just this year, next year, year after that, but 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So sometimes uh, employer plans will allow you to borrow it and do a loan. This is completely different. This is a flat withdrawal. This is a flat withdrawal. There, there have been provisions to repay it, but you're not obligated to, unlike a 401k loan. Um, and uh, the, the idea here in this is that you need that cash now so you can withdraw the cash now and then spread out some of the pain over the, the next three years. But I, I, I agree completely with you that if that's going to have... Uh, we're, we are th- throwing it around like it's no big deal here. Mm-hmm. That's going to have a, that potentially could have a pretty big impact on your retirement and the lifestyle that you have. Mm-hmm. Now, um, some would say, well, th- I'm not going to have a retirement if I can't get through this emergency. So it means y- you have to weigh that there. That's right. But it's a it's a new feature uh, that now has this been made. I say permanent. This is a ongoing thing until they change this law. Uh, that's right. That's right. Okay. I just, cause last year, the Corona, the cares act provision, the, it was limited just to last year. Mm-hmm. So new feature going forward for people's retirement accounts that they have emergencies with, they can take that withdrawal, spread the taxes over three years. That's a nice thing too, because, uh, who wants to just have a, an extra hundred thousand dollars in income to pay all at once while you're going through that emergency. That's right. So do they have to pay it in three installments or do you know, is that something that they can just, they can defer the, all the taxes for three years? No, they take a hit of it every year. Um, so, so, you know, they take a third each of the years and then have the tax impact a third, a third in each of those years. <laughs> um, and I think it's important to just to comment there that it's always important to make sure that the laws have not changed. So, you know, so should someone in the future be listening to our show, they would want to make sure that nothing that Congress has done has changed this provision because it is so new and and tax laws are having a tendency, it seems, not to stick around for terribly long. And if people are listening to the future, would you like to tell them any uh, you know advice and impart an new wisdom on there? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Um no, not the, nothing comes off the top of my head. <laughs> well, if they need help with any of that, they can give you a call to your office at 316-803-1040 and walk through any of those uh, any of those uh, rules and, and regulations with that. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with our estate planning advisor to talk about some Medicare rules. Stay tuned after the break.
I'm Joshua Sikora, CPA with Market Tax Services. Are you tired of filing taxes yourself? Let the tax professionals at Market Tax Services help. Personal tax preparation for new customers is only $59, and that $59 rate is guaranteed for two years. We also offer discounts to new business customers. Our team of CPAs and tax preparers work together to ensure you receive the best possible service and reduce the stress of filing your taxes. Call Market Tax Services at 803-1040. That's 316-803-1040. Or visit markettaxservices.com. Check out our website, retirehour.com, where you can watch past episodes and stay up to date with current episodes. Also check out our Facebook as well, Retire Hour, for clips from the show. And don't forget to go and see us on uh, YouTube, search for Retire Hour, or download our podcast of the episodes anywhere you can download podcasts, searching Retire Hour. Back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby here in studio with me is our estate planning attorney, Gerald Eidelman. Hello. You know, I, I think uh, this is important to bring up because you and I both had a conversation with a couple we know this week that they said it in a joking way, but you could tell that really was the extent of their plan for if one of them needed care, they would just divorce the other and give the other all the, the person that didn't need the care all the assets and then they would go on Medicaid, and that's not how that works. No, no. I mean, what they were looking at is essentially giving the assets to one of the two of the the, the spouses, and make it that way that the spouse that was in the nursing home would not be able to uh, have those assets uh, counted as available for spending down uh, for Medicaid. Uh, the, the bigger problem, uh, one of the first one is divorce don't really, doesn't really work for avoiding Medicaid spend downs. If it's done at the last minute, you know, it's, it, it's, it's evident that it's, you know, it's a subterfuge and it won't be considered, uh, a, a, a actual divorce and the assets will still be counted. So it won't do any good in their case in particular, though. They would have to have a good crystal ball to figure out which of the two would be the one that would need Medicaid. Because if you give one to the, to the wife and she needs Medicaid, that, that doesn't do you any good and vice versa. So it's not a, a, a good planning technique. Now, the, the, the officials that work with that, they're going to really see that for what it was as far as, well, you really just got divorced because someone had failing health. And you gave the other person and then good health, all the assets the, there's that look back period. They're going to look at that, right? They're gonna, well, the, the concept is that you, they can't look at that because when you have a property settlement agreement approved by the court, you're not giving away anything in a sense. You're actually doing what the court is ordering to you. So they can't treat it as a gift. But the closer it is to the need for Medicaid, they can't say that it's just simply employed to be able to get around the rules and dismiss the court order as being valid as for purposes of the spend down for Medicaid. Uh, so that's, that's the real problem. But again, you know, if, and if you do it far enough in advance, you know, being divorced has a lot of different issues that people don't realize besides the, the issue with Medicaid. You know, you lose certain rights when you're not married to your spouse. Even if you're living together, um, you know, there's certain rights that are by statute given to spouses uh, over the property of the other spouse. And certainly when it comes to medical, uh, you know, uh, 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 control, you know, uh, doctors really defer to spouses. If you're no longer the spouse, then you lose all those privileges. Unless you have a medical durable power of attorney. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Exactly. No, I mean, you could do that. You could try to get around it that way, but it's not the preferred method and it's not effective. Well, and, and, and through this conversation you and I were having with them, uh, they're now taking some steps to uh, be pre- a little more prepared for this. But that right. was really, uh, they laughed when they said it, but that was really their their plan to address right. if one of them needed care and and uh we've heard that before yep. and and there's some confusion out there to um the rules 
And would that really work as um, a solution in that instance? And oftentimes it's not. And mm-hmm. there's there's just um, once a spouse or once an individual needs care, it really, really, really limits their options at that point. Yeah. By the time you really need to actually be in care, then you have very few options as to how to basically uh, exempt certain assets. You can't convert certain assets into exempt assets. But again, you're going to be limited. So if they have questions surrounding that, today is the best time they can have the conversation with you and they can call you at your office at 316-361-0553. I never remember. I never can remember your phone number. So I was at to write it down. You see me looking down there. So I, I can just walk down the hall and grab you when I need you. I don't have That's to call right. you. But thanks for tuning in to Retire Hour this week. We'll catch you next week on Retire Hour. expressed in this program do not represent financial, medical, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with a competent professional to provide advice tailored to your needs and circumstances. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. 